have another lightning talk. I am excited to introduce to the stage Maya Lang. Maya is a senior business consultant in the HHS Office of the Chief Technology Officer. She previously served as a technical advisor at the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, where she led an effort to improve the culture and overall organization. Maya has experience in healthcare, both in the public and private sectors, and today she will talk about the importance of design in scoping out efforts in government. Please welcome Maya Lang. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. They asked if I wanted to stand by the podium, and I was like, I don't think these things are designed for me. Um, so it is my pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Maya Lang. I'm a member of the Department of Health and Human Service, and I've had the pleasure for the past two years to be engaged with uh, the American Indian and Alaska Native population through um, Indian Health Service and more broadly through the ITU community. So one, I see Rusty over here. I have to give him a, a shout out. And I also want to just um, acknowledge and partners who's been engaged in this work over the past couple years. So um, what I'm going to talk today about is a, a number of things that you've heard throughout the day, things that you're familiar with around IT modernization. But more importantly, I'm going to talk to you about what this looks like in the context of underserved populations and how we approached addressing this challenge through the Department of Health and Human Service. So they asked for a slide. I'm going to put this down. I'm not a slide person, so this is what I've got for you. Um, about two years ago, the VA made an announcement that they were moving from their legacy electronic health record system called Vista to a new system um, on the commercial, in the commercial side called Cerner. Um, what many people don't know, and um, some people in this room are familiar with, is that Indian Health Service, a component of the Department of Health and Human Service, uh, delivers care to 2.6 American Indian and Alaskan Natives through a comprehensive ecosystem. And they receive or facilitate that care delivery model through a system called RPMS. This is a system that is an open source system that has some enhancement dependencies through the VA. And so as the VA goes through a transition to their new system, Indian Health Service is in the position that they need to decide what they will do with their electronic health record system. So about a year ago, we executed on a discovery to define what modernization for Indian Health Service looked like. We asked the contractors, well, um, can we modernize the legacy system? Uh, I got the best response back. Uh, with an unlimited amount of money, all things are possible. Um, and I said, well, that's great. We don't have that. So help me understand <laughs> what modernization looks like in this context. And what we realized is that we needed to define modernization in a way that we thought about our systems in a, as, a, as a life form, that they needed to be reactive or responsive to both internal and external needs, and that they would continue to evolve in meeting the care delivery context. And so I'm sure many of you are familiar with this notion that we can't just turn a system off and think that 10, 20, 30 years from now that it's going to continue to serve us in the ways that we needed when we first turned it on. And that we need to actively be engaged in in what ways should we be growing this system to meet our needs. And when we talk about the American Indian and Alaska Native population, we need to think about that in the context of care delivery. Our systems are facilitating the care delivery of a population that lives in very rural environments that have very limited access to health care, who are often receiving primary care in areas where they may be referred out for subspecialty care. And the importance of that record being transferable is critical. The ability for care delivery staff to be able to access information that helps to inform their care delivery ensures that we're meeting the high outcomes that we expect for the American in the American Indian Alaska Native population. And notably here is that many um, of the health outcomes that we see in the general population are significantly skewed in the American Indian and Alaska Native population. And so what we understood is 
we need to define what are the unique care delivery elements for the American Indian and Alaska Native population that need to be taken into consideration as we think about the system that we use to serve them. And so we used, um, or I was, <laughs> I felt very strongly that we needed to integrate the design elements um, into this project. This is something that I've been exposed to in government about uh, three or four years ago through a previous role that I was in around the importance of using human-centered design in order to identify and validate what our patient and consumer needs are. And so over the past year, we were out in the field. I would say we were traveling roughly every other week for nine months, engaging directly with sites across the United States. We went to 12 regions. We've in, in, engaged and interacted with over 1,500 individuals, whether through listening sessions, whether through interviews, um, whether through data calls, to be able to get a sense from them around what the challenges were that they're facing not only in care delivery, but in what ways the technology is either impeding or facilitating their needs. And what we know today is that there is an overwhelming desire for for the system to be enhanced. Um, on the surface, individuals are interested in more training and engagement. They're interested in an interface that's more user friendly. We know on the back end, we want to ensure that we have a record that's portable. Certainly, we know this through interoperability. Um, and where we are as the department is in a unique position to address interoperability as the Department of Health and Human Service is the body regulating on um, on health IT policy through the Office of the National Coordinator, who has been involved in this project along with the department and along with Indian Health Service in order to identify these needs. What is the most powerful message that we're able to communicate today is through the personas and journey maps that were developed in order to A, define what the unique care delivery elements are and to B, lay out what does that care interaction uh, journey look like for a patient and to C, overlay that with where the opportunities for technology exist. We know that through commercial solutions, we certainly will get defined workflows, but we also know that as we need to, as we look at what are the care elements that must be addressed, we can utilize these deliverables to ask our contractors or vendors to, in what ways can they address these specific elements. And so we intend to use the human-centered design as a means to facilitate the conversation, not only in understanding and creating empathy for the population, not only in requesting funding and to justify why we need the money needed in order to enhance the system, but more importantly, when we engage with the IT community to ensure that what we're receiving actually aligns to the needs that our consumers, our stakeholders, and our patients are calling for. And so I also want to add in here, because of this conference, why it's important for us to look at this in more of a modular way. Why do we need to take an agile approach to an acquisition in an IT, in, uh, on an IT project, right? We know that the system today needs a huge lift. We also know that we would be behind ourselves if we didn't consider what it looks like in the future. We also know that we cannot throw the problem over the fence and believe that 10 years from now all of it will be solved. And so we are also thinking creatively around what does the acquisition strategy look like to ensure that we are chunking down the effort to address very specific needs. Things that are called out within this project particularly are interoperability. It is the second highest theme and challenge in our discovery. We know that records are not flowing with patients, and I'm not saying anything new to you. But what we may take for granted, and certainly I do, living in an urban environment, is that when I go to a healthcare um, facility and then I have to go see someone else in a different facility, I know that those healthcare providers are able to access my record. More importantly, I as a patient know that I'm able to reference that information. In the current environment today, the record does not flow with the patient. Oftentimes, individuals are seen at federal sites and referred out to private sector sites, and we have medical record rooms that look like 
coffee shop, uh, copy shops. You literally have things being mailed and faxed and scanned. And we know that we can significantly add value to the organization and to care of the patients by automating and ensuring that information is flowing where it needs to be at the time that the care professionals and the patient needs to make decisions. And so what we know and what we intend to do as we approach solving this problem is that we must chunk down the broad problem into segments and take a very agile approach to how we're addressing the problems, knowing that we don't want to see solutions 10 years from now. We want to start seeing solutions today because the need for care delivery and the care of our patients isn't something that can wait 10 years from now. And when we challenge ourselves in thinking about modernization, we also must challenge ourselves in what ways will we ensure that at every single point we continue to meet the needs of our consumers through the technology that's being provided. I think I have 19 seconds, maybe 18. So with that being said, <laughs> here's my third slide. Uh, my name is Maya Lang. If this interests you, um, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me by email. My information is here for the next uh, two, one second. So uh, thank you.